we spoke basically mainly about entrepreneurship. So that means starting a company essentially in the outside world, starting something new, right? And we also have this other concept that's quite recent and it's called entrepreneurship. So it's something that has to do um, with the company that you're working at today or with the university that you're working at today or with the government that you're working at today. It means you're innovating within the company without leaving the company. So entrepreneurship is acting like an entrepreneur but within an established company. It's creating a new business or a new venture or a new initiative or a new project within an organization. So if you think of, for instance, the Fortune 500 companies, 88% uh, of the companies that were in Fortune 500 in 1955 are no longer there in 2015. So we've had a huge change in the leading companies in the world. 90% of them are not as powerful as they were before or they don't even exist, some of them. So, entrepreneurship is something that companies need. They need their employees to create new ideas, to create new businesses, to create new projects within the companies because otherwise they disappear. So two of the most famous examples of entrepreneurship are the post-it notes, so all of the sticky notes that you might have and stick on your desk, these notes were created by a guy called Arthur Fry, and he was working at a big company, he was working at 3M, and he was also uh, in his spare time developing this new type of glue that would stick to something temporarily. And another example is Gmail, so that's Google's email. Uh, this was essentially created because Google has a 20% uh, innovation time policy. So what that means is that every employee has 20% of their time that they're getting paid for to work on innovative projects. So that's 20% innovation time at Google and that's how Gmail came about. So big tech companies usually uh, have this type of policy because, well, first because they can afford it and second because they need it. They need a lot of innovative ideas. So there are different types of programs that companies and universities as well use to encourage entrepreneurship. Uh, you might have heard of or attended idea fairs, hackathons. Uh, recently with new technology in Zhongguan. So there have been a lot of hackathons, sandbox funds, uh, the innovation time program that I just mentioned to you with the Google example. The point is that companies sometimes organize these types of activities in order to encourage their employees to come up with new ideas. Now there have been a number of academic approaches to entrepreneurship uh, and some of them suggest that a wide reorganization is required to foster entrepreneurship, especially if you want to do it at all kinds of levels. Uh, there's also the idea that you have to develop a culture of uh, entrepreneurs and you need things like a creative structure. So that means the whole structure of the company is designed to encourage creativity. You need some basic capital, you need some money that you set aside for funding entrepreneurship. And you also have the idea that personality factors are closely related to entrepreneurship. Uh, we have uh, just a couple of more, uh, a couple of more slides, actually one more slide, so I'm just gonna finish that off before, before I let you go for a few minutes. So uh, some of the empirical insights into entrepreneurship are that this is a people-centric bottom-up approach. So the idea is that you empower people and then they come up with ideas that feed into the company, not that you give them orders to follow. Uh, and entrepreneurship uh, tends to pay off many times in terms of company growth, in terms of culture, in terms of talent, in terms of the attraction power that this company develops, especially in the business world, and that's 
also a factor when you're recruiting, for instance, new employees. So if you want to get the best and brightest minds, why do they want to go to California? Why do they want to work for Microsoft and Google? Well, because they get all kinds of programs like that where they can express their creativity. Um, so it's also not about creating entrepreneurs, at least based on what we've seen. It's about finding and recognizing them. So there are already in every company, in every university, even in this classroom, it's almost certain that there are people here who are able to create and launch new ventures. It's just a matter of finding them, recognizing them, and encouraging them. And, and they'll do it because these people need a platform to express themselves. Entrepreneurs tend to know the rules and to break them effectively. So they don't break them at will, but they break them when, when this can benefit their new venture or project in some way. And, and entrepreneurship also requires a different management approach. So you don't necessarily uh, adopt the same approach when you want a team that follows orders and a team that comes up with creative ideas. Then we're going to discuss briefly entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship after the break.